Delay Cree creates VO2 Max. Every runner, cyclist, and triathlete, I'm sure, has seen it. It's a fun number that loves to go up and down depending on your fitness, on your Garmin watch, or smartwatch device. But, like you, I had a lot of misconceptions about what to do with that number and exactly how to train with it. Watch, listen, and learn as I stumble through what I thought it was, and I promise all of this will make you a smarter and faster runner and triathlete and more on this episode of Trees and D Lake. So the oxygen helps us burn the fuel. Then the blood delivers it to the muscles. And the heart is the engine pumping to the muscles. So the bigger and stronger the heart, the more oxygen and more carbohydrates we deliver to the muscles. Aerobic exercise increases the size of the heart so that it can supply more blood, more fuel, and more oxygen to the muscles. So if we can supply more blood and more oxygen to the muscles with a lower, easier heart rate, we can go faster as we keep building the heart rate up, we can go faster and faster. You explained it way better than me and a whole lot of points that I did not bring up as usual. Um, so this is why we make a, a good team. The car needs the fuel to power the wheels. So the fuel is the carbohydrates and the fat. Uh, in essence, if we're running a marathon, uh, and I know we, we've discussed this and it's a big contentious topic, it's probably more carbohydrates than fats that we need. So the bigger the engine, the more power it can get the wheels. So if our VO2 max is bigger, we've just basically taken the car engine from a, a 1.6 litre to a 3 litre engine. So that's what we're trying to do with the VO2. We're trying to improve it so we can get more oxygen to the muscles. The trouble is, the bigger the car, the bigger the engine, the heavier the car is. So the heavier the car is, it takes more power to get that car to work. That's why it's always expressed as a percentage of, of body weight. Because if it's not in relation to body weight, it, it's meaningless. Because we're running a marathon, we have to carry our bodies the whole way down. This is why we have this problem with runners always trying to be lighter, because they've realized that their VO2 max will go up. The lungs are still the same, the ability to get oxygen, the muscles is the same, but the lighter body uh, allows them to go faster. And I also found out that 400s uh, 10 by 12 by 16 by 400s. That, that's my favorite. Two minutes. Yeah. Uh, 80 seconds with 40 rest and just do the two minute circle. I like the rhythm of it and how you keep building and in the middle, you just get into this great groove. I get into a flow state on that, that workout <laughs> particularly, but I, I found out that that was a VO2 max workout too. Um, and I mm. was like, oh, I did not. I thought that was an interval workout. Yeah, it, it's an interval workout, but it's developing a VO2 max. Whereas if I was just doing 40 second sprints all out and then having five minutes off, that's probably not going to develop my VO2 max system. And if I was doing 10 minutes, which would be more of a tempo run, if I was doing 10 minutes, you know, at my marathon, half marathon pacing, 10K pacing, that probably wouldn't develop my VO2 max as well as a VO2 max specific workout. Uh, just a traditional VO2 max workout is an uh, interval three to five, five and a half minutes at around my 5K pace-ish current, if I know that one, if I've done some time trials, uh, with a three minute rest and two and a half to three minute rest. The reason being you wanna get your heart rate lower so that you don't build up lactate, lactate because this is not a tempo run, this is not a lactate test. There's been a lot of studies that I've read and I've actually done it myself where you can actually be on the lower end. So it's a range and you can still get benefits, which is beautiful. You need to get your heart rate up to this certain amount and Z4 will be dependent for a lot of different people um, for a certain amount of time. For me, I like to do it early in my training blocks to get ready for race specific work. And I really like four to six weeks seems to be about the time when most studies have said that you don't get any more benefits. You are, this is genetic. Your VO2 max is genetic. You can work on it, but you can't increase it that much more. And there's other ways of increasing other things like your lactate threshold and your running economy that actually give you bigger bangs for your buck. When we do a VO2 max workout, what we're saying is we're trying to work at a pace which is carrying that our maximum amount of oxygen to the muscles per minute that we can cope with. Beyond that, we can't cope with it. So we have to then use the anaerobic system to add supplementary benefits. Sorry, that is different than a Moffatone run though. So this is where I got confused. VO2 max pace, it's the maximum amount of fuel and oxygen we can supply the muscles. We are creating lactic acid, but we're absorbing it at a pace as well. 
so we're not going into any depth. With the Maffetone idea of maximum aerobic, he's trying to go to pace where we're not even building up lactic at all. He's working at what we call the fat burning, carbohydrate, glycogen burning threshold. So we're trying to burn as much fat for fuel as we can on Maffetone threshold. With the VO2 max, it's pure carbs we're burning. I mean, it will be going on, but as a source, contribution is minimal. But we can go on a heck of a lot longer using fat for fuel than carbs. So VO2 max, which the two is a number, uh, maximum volume of oxygen. It's your body using your aerobic engine, the oxygen, to the point where it then tips over and is about to then start using glycogen for the majority of the energy, which is the anaerobic system. The, the mic is probably already, ah, you need to make this more simple. <laughs> so VO2 max, the max amount of oxygen in liters your body can get to the muscles in a minute. So we can compare it with other people. We tend to express it as a number in relation to our body weight. Garmin says, your VO2 max is 50. What it means is that you have 50 liters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight delivered to your muscles every minute. So that if you are lighter, you actually need less. Your top cross country skiers, for example, as a number, will be in the 90s. An average person is around about 35. So a top cross country skier, they can get three times more oxygen to their muscles per minute than an average athlete. Uh, well, why is this important? It's because the, the oxygen is used to burn the carbohydrates, the fuel. So we need the two together to get us the energy to get us down the road. A VO2 max session, in my way of interpretation, is, is a threshold session yep. where you're trying to stay using oxygen as the primary source of fuel. When you shorten the rest too much, you need to supplement that and, and lactic, the lactic system comes in uh, and we build up uh, the uh, lactic acid. What we're trying to do with that session is that's a, what I call a lactic tolerance session. So you're trying to go further with large amounts of lactic in the system before breaking down. So that's a different kind of thing. What you're doing, you want to make the engine bigger, which the VO2 is doing, but a lactic tolerance session is equally as valid because if I can actually keep running at a fast pace with a lot of lactate in the body and use the glycolic system as well, as we discussed in the previous podcast, if we can use this anaerobic system as well to add more fuel and can cope with large amounts of lactate in the body, then I can keep going faster longer. <laughs> 